welcome to our instructional series of videos. In this installment, we're going to show you how to create a RAID volume using Soft RAID 8 for Windows. Before we start, there are just a couple of things to take note of. We've already installed Soft RAID on our computer. We'll be using Soft RAID 8 on Windows 11 in this example, but the basic instructions will apply to Windows 10 as well. It's recommended that, in most cases, all the drives you're using in your RAID array be the same size and model. Mixing brands, sizes, and types can result in lower performance. Keep in mind that this process will destroy any data already on these drives. If there are files on any of the drives we're making into a RAID that you want to keep, you'll need to back them up elsewhere before we start. For the same reason, we also recommend performing this operation on a computer with no other drives attached. Unmount and disconnect any drives beside your boot drive before beginning. Now, let's get started. Before we create a RAID volume, we'll first want to certify each of the disks. This contributes significantly to the safety and integrity of your data. Connect the enclosure or enclosures with the drives you want in a RAID array to your computer and turn it on. Next, go ahead and launch SoftRaid either from the shortcut on your desktop or from the Applications menu. Windows will ask if you want to allow SoftRaid to make changes to your device. As this is precisely what we want to do, go ahead and click Yes. Once SoftRaid is launched, select the All Disks section near the bottom of the left-hand column. In there, you should be able to see your boot drive along with the drives for your RAID. Click on one of the RAID drives to select it, and a number of options are shown to the right. Select Test and you'll be presented with two options. Verify performs a read test on all of the sectors of your drive. However, we want to certify the drive, which does multiple read and write tests on the drives we're making into a RAID. You'll be given a warning that this process will erase everything currently on the disk. If there's anything on the disk you want to keep, this is your last chance to copy it to a different location before proceeding. Click Certify Disk and the certification process will begin for the drive. As you can see, this process can take quite a while. Fortunately, you can certify multiple drives at the same time. Simply repeat the same steps for each drive, then let the computer sit until certification is complete. Once certification has completed, you'll have a dialog box with the results from each drive. You can dismiss this window, and we can now create our RAID volume. From the list on the left, shift-click to select the drives you've just verified. Then click New RAID Volume on the right. You'll be given a choice of what kind of RAID you want to create. Soft RAID supports several different RAID levels, each with its own unique benefits. For more detailed information on each type, visit go.owc.com slash soft RAID slash RAID levels. Since we have four identical drives, we're going to go with a RAID 5, which offers a mix of redundancy and speed. You'll then get a list of unformatted drives attached to your system. You can select which drives you want to include in this RAID. The lights for each drive will also flash at this time as a second indicator of which drives are selected. Once you've chosen the drives you want in the RAID and click Next, you'll be presented with formatting options. The first is the name field, which, as you may have guessed, allows you to name the RAID volume. You can call it pretty much anything you want, but we're just going to call ours RAID. Next is the size option. If you have a specific need for a smaller custom size for your RAID volume, you can do it here. In most cases, though, using the maximum size is the best bet. Finally, you can choose the formatting for the RAID volume. There are three options. Choose NTFS if you're only going to be using your RAID with Windows systems. HFS Plus is for volumes you plan on using with both Macs and Windows, and your RAID is made up of platter-based drives. APFS is also for mixed OS use, but is better for solid-state drives. We're only going to use this RAID with this computer, so we're going to choose NTFS. Next, we'll choose optimization and safety options. SoftRaid can optimize your RAID for different usage scenarios, including special ones for video, audio, and photography. 
Since we're going to use this RAID for video editing, we'll select Digital Video. You can also manually set the size of each stripe in the RAID. Under most circumstances, you shouldn't need to change the default size. The only exception is, if your stripe size is larger than 64 kilobytes, you'll only be able to use your RAID with Soft RAID 8 or later. If you're going to connect this RAID to multiple computers, they also have to be running Soft RAID 8 or later. If you don't know what version of Soft RAID these other computers are running, you should set it to 64 kilobytes or lower to ensure compatibility. However, since this is the only computer we're going to be using this RAID with, we're going to leave it on the default setting. Finally, there's the option to enable or disable Safeguard. Safeguard is an added layer of security to prevent accidental deletion of a soft RAID volume. There's no real downside to leaving it on, so it's probably safest just to do so. If you left your stripe size larger than 64 kilobytes, you'll get a warning dialog box describing the soft RAID 8 compatibility requirements we discussed earlier. If you're sure you don't need to change the size, go ahead and continue. Finally, you'll get a brief description of all the aspects of the RAID volume that we've set up. If you want to change something, you can go back to change it. Otherwise, go ahead and click Create Volume. Soft RAID will then create the RAID volume with all the settings shown in the previous window. This may take a few moments. Once created, your Soft RAID volume can be found as a drive in the Explorer window and can be accessed like any other external drive.